to see you. Amy, don't be mad at me. I'm sorry for how I behaved. You've been drinking again. Why are you being so hard on me? It's 4 p.m. Someone has to do it. When did you begin your great work of art, Rafaela? Never. Never what? I'm a failure. Joe is in New York, being a writer, and I'm a failure. That's quite a statement to make at 20. Well, Rome took all the vanity out of me. Paris made me realize that I'd never be a genius, so I'm giving up on all my foolish artistic hopes. Why would you give up, Amy? You have so much talent and energy. Talent isn't genius. And no amount of energy can make it so. I want to be great or nothing, and I don't want to be some commonplace bogger, and I don't intend to try. What women are allowed in the Club of Geniuses anyway? The Brontes. <laughs> That's it? Yeah, I think so. And who will declare their genius? Men, I suppose. Well, they're cutting down the competition. That is a very complicated way of making me feel better. Do you, though? Do you feel better? I do think, male or female, I am a middling talent. Middling talent? May I ask your last portrait be me? All right. Now that you've given up all of your foolish, artistic hopes, what are you going to do with your life? Polish up on my other talents and become an ornament to society. Mm, that's where Fred Vaughn comes in, I suppose. Don't you make fun. I said his name. You're not engaged at all. No. You will be if he goes down on one knee. Most likely, yes. He's rich. Richer than you, even. I understand queens of society can't get on without money, although it does sound odd from the mouth of one of your mother's girls. I've always known that I would marry Rich. Why should I be ashamed of that? There's nothing to be ashamed of, as long as you love him. Well, I believe we have some power over who we love. It isn't something just happens to a person. I think the poets might disagree. Well, I'm not a poet. I'm just a woman. And as a woman, there's no way for me to make my own money. Not enough to earn a living or support a family. And if I did have my own money, which I don't, it would belong to my husband the moment we got married. And if we had children, they would be his, not mine. It would be his property. So, so don't sit there and tell me that marriage is not an economic proposition, because it is. It may not be for you, Laurie, but it most certainly is for me. I think that's Fred. Can you grab my hat, please? How do I look? Do I look all right? You look beautiful. You are beautiful. Three nights ago, I ordered myself a very slutty pizza. I mean, the bitch was dripping. The little stuffed crust wanted to be in me so bad. I ate the little tart like she meant nothing to me. She loved it. That pretty much nailed that, so I dragged myself upstairs to my office or my bed and started working on the figures for my cafe. I run a guinea pig themed cafe, but it's going to close unless a check falls out of the sky or a banker comes on my ass. But Neither are going to happen, and I don't want to dignify the banker with a proper mention, so I won't talk about him or how I do sometimes wish that a banker would just come on my ass for £10,000. But apparently we're not supposed to talk about that, so I won't. <laughs> okay. Even though it would solve everything, I won't. Even though I could. Lying in my office, the cafe numbers start to jump out at me like little ninjas. So I rationalise that it's probably quite a good idea just to switch off for a bit, improve my mind. So I end up watching a pretty good film actually, called Seventeen Again, with Zac Efron in it, who is fit. I know, I know, but he's actually a really good actor. And, like, the film could have been worse, to be honest. Just check it out. Then I lay there thinking, cafe numbers, cafe numbers, Zach numbers. I googled Obama to check out with, you know, whatever. Who, as it turns out, is also attractive. 
lay there thinking numbers, cafe, numbers, Obama, numbers, sack, Obama, sack, numbers, cafe, Obama, numbers, sack. <gasps> Suddenly I was on you porn having a horrible wank. I just found the right sort of gangbang. And that really knocked me out, so I popped my computer under my bed and lay down, kissed my boyfriend Harry goodnight and went to sleep. What the hell do you think you're doing? What the hell do I think I'm doing? What the fuck do you think you're doing, Edith? Are you really gonna come in here and judge me for flirting with someone after you've been fucking my husband you for how many years? I have a ring on my finger, Edith. We have a child together. He doesn't love you, Rosalind. He doesn't love you. He loves me. And you know it and I know it. He knows it might be over now, Rosalind, but, but it was beautiful and it was real. You you scare him and you, you manipulate him and you use your own son against him. Well, you know, he must like it on some level. You know, he must like it because he keeps coming back for it. You know, it's like, it's like that perfume that you love that you can't get enough of even when there's something sour in it. You know, he's always going to want me, Edith. He ain't never leaving me. And I won't make you so sorry for what you've done to my family. I won't make you so sorry. You mark my word. I fucked up. You're so fucked up and I would never say anything that fucked up you do because you're gross inside. You're so fucked up and gross. Oh, I'm gross inside. Yes. I'm gross inside. Yes. Maybe you're gross inside, Edith. With all that robbing people and all that fucked up shit that you do. You know, maybe we're both gross inside. Maybe that's what Irving loves about us. At least he's fucking consistent with his woman. You know, sometimes all you have in life are your fucked up poisonous choices.